Forests in anime can be both beautiful and haunting. And after seeing how much detail and thought out brushwork goes into each piece of scenery, no matter what anime it's from, it seemed rather daunting trying to figure out how to recreate that same painterly tree bark look in Blender by only using nodes. But despite my initial fears, it turns out it's pretty easy to do, and I'm gonna show you how. But first, welcome to the Comfy Mug channel. My name is Christian, and I spend countless hours learning how to make anime stuff in Blender so that you don't have to. So if you wanna learn how to make your own anime textures in 3D, like and subscribe so you don't miss out. And also check out my Patreon. The first tier is only $2 a month, and you get custom anime assets made by me at the start of each month. It helps a lot to support this channel, so thank you guys so much. I I really appreciate it. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Uh, first things first, let's head to our render settings and enable bloom for better lighting and change the view transform in our color management tab from AGX to standard to see the exact colors of our textures. We'll also want to enable node wrangler if you haven't already to navigate the shader editor a whole lot easier. Once that's saved, we'll head down to the viewport and add a cylinder with a depth of 10 feet, or about 3.048 meters if you're using the metric system for your units. Tabbing into edit mode, we'll make a few loop cuts, sliding the two outer cuts to the edges of our cylinder and place the middle one just a little bit above the bottom. Now we'll turn on proportional editing and start moving a few points from the base outward to give the tree trunk an illusion of having roots. This is pretty easy to do from top down. Oh, almost forgot about this part. Adding a subdivision modifier will round out the edges and make the tree look a lot smoother. Not mandatory, but anyways. We'll then tab back out of edit mode and change the viewport to rendered mode and press shift D to add a sun, changing the strength to three and the angle to whatever you want. And once you have that set up, we can take a step back and admire our work for two seconds. Now, there are three simple parts to this anime tree bark shader, the texture, color, and shader output. And as the texture is the driver for both the color and shader output, we'll start with that first. So, when we open up the shader editor, we'll delete the principal BSDF and add four noise textures, three color ramps, two mixed colors, a combine XYZ, and an object info node. We'll set the right hand mixed color to linear light with a factor at 0.1 and change the other mixed color to 0.2. Connect each group of nodes in the way you see on screen, changing the top right noise scale to 20, the bottom right noise to seven with its roughness at one, and then change the bottom left noises scale to seven as well. We'll also want to select our top left noise texture and press Control T to add a mapping and texture coordinate node, changing the vector input to object and connect the vector output to the bottom left and top right noise textures as well. But for the bottom right texture, we'll add another mapping and texture coordinate node with the object input connected and connect the object info nodes location output to the corresponding location inputs of both mapping nodes. This just makes the textures change based on the location of the object. Pair that with the object vector output and this texture gains an infinite amount of variation. Now, here's where it starts to get interesting. By pressing Pressing shift Control left click on our linear light, we'll see the mix between our first couple textures is pretty muddy without much contrast. And since we'll eventually plug this into the bump map for our shader output, we want to lower the value of our top right color ramp's white stop to make the secondary texture shine through a bit more. By doing this, the textures will have much more contrast than they did before, but the result doesn't look very much like a tree yet. We'll want to stretch these textures out and distort them a bit to make it look like the bark has grown up with the direction of the tree. So instead of just changing the z-axis scale of our textures mapping node, we'll plug the combine XYZ that's plugged into our other noise textures into the scale input of our mapping node and change the z value to 0.1. Now the tree bark look is really coming together. You can change the factor of our mix color to distort the texture even more, giving it a more gnarled look, and adjust the leftmost mapping node's z-axis scaling to anywhere between 1 and 0.6. Though the adjustments aren't super visible right now, they'll be very prominent when the texture is plugged into our shader output's bump map. And after selecting all the nodes and pressing shift P, we'll rename our frame to texture with the F2 key at the top of your keyboard and set this texture section off to the side to make room for our color section. 
Now, getting into the color, we'll need four color ramps, three of which will have their white stops crunched, and the fourth with its black stop turned up to the middle. We'll also need an HSV node, a noise texture with the scale set to 20, and a Voronoi set to distance to edge with its scale at 15, detail at 5, and roughness at 0.68. I know, super specific. We'll also want to add a mapping and texture coordinate node for each texture, switch both to object, and add an object info node with its location connected. After that, we'll add a mix color node set to linear light with a factor at one and connect these nodes to see what we're doing. Now, we have these really detailed fractures that we'll want to both squish and stretch by changing the X and Y axis scaling of our Voronoi to 1.6 each and the x-axis to 0.15. We can adjust the noise's color ramp a little if needed, but once we're done with this section, let's head back up to add four more mixed color nodes, one of which we'll change to lighten, keeping its factor at 0.5, and another changed to overlay with its factor at 0.2. Once these are all set up, connect the nodes as you see on screen, taking the result of the texture section and plugging it into the color of our HSV node node, whose value will increase to 2, and we'll connect the result of our color's linear light to the B input of the overlay. The last thing we need to do for this section is change both mixes A and B input colors. For the top one, we'll select a mid tan in the A and a dark tan in the B, and for the lower mix, the A input will be fully black and the B will make a desaturated yellow-green color with the value at 1. This will act as some small moss spots on our tree that we can increase or decrease the opacity of by adjusting the lightens factor. Oh, and if you're wondering, all of the hex codes for the colors I'm using in this tutorial will be in the description for your convenience. But getting back to it, we won't want to change the factor of our overlay too much, since the black value will really start to come through if we increase it. But we want the factor at just the right amount to allow for the bark detail to come through. That being said, we can select this section nodes, place them all in a frame, and rename it to color, and move on to the final and easiest section for this shader. Now, for our shader output, we'll only need seven nodes total, so we'll start by adding a bump map, two diffuse BSDFs, two shader to RGBs, a color ramp, and a mix color set to multiply with its factor at 0.85. Connect the nodes as you see on screen, making sure to connect the color section's result to the color input of our top diffuse and the result of our texture section to the height of the bump map, setting the distance to two. After doing this, you'll notice that the tree doesn't look like anime. But that's because we gotta change the color ramp a little. Normally, to achieve the anime look, I gravitate towards turning the color ramp to constant, but I actually want some softer areas in the shadows to get a more cohesive look. So, what we'll do is change the black stop to just a bit lighter gray, crunch the color stops a bit, and then add two color stops in between, making them both the same gray color as each other, and push them both close to the edges of the other color stops, enough to give the shadow a stylized look while still having some soft edges. After that, you can change the settings of various textures and nodes to adjust the look of your trees, and once you find a look you like most, you will have made your own 3D anime bark texture. But a tree is never complete without its leaves, so check out my tutorial on making fully 3D anime trees. I mean, if you want to. I guess you don't have to. <laughs> That's fine. But let me know what kinds of projects you guys are working on in the comment section below. Remember to like and subscribe, and check out my Patreon if you want custom anime-inspired assets made by me. I want to take a moment to thank all of my patrons for being so dedicated and supporting me so that I can make these videos in the first place. You guys have given me the ability to be creative and figure out how to make all of these anime shaders so that I can teach you all. So from my heart to yours, thank you guys so much. You truly mean a lot. And thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you here next time at the Comfy Mug.